Far from Beijing, on China's western frontier, lies one of the most inhospitable, inaccessible places on the planet. This is Tibet Autonomous Region, home to the highest mountains and possibly the hardiest people. The regional capital, Lhasa, is a place of pilgrimage for Buddhists and a veritable tourist hotspot. But there's much more to Tibet than yaks and temples. On March 28th, the region will celebrate Serfs Emancipation Day. So, how has Tibet developed over the past six decades? And how have Tibetans modernized their education, their healthcare, their whole way of life without losing their identity? This is Xinhua Special. I'm Roisin Timmins. In 1959, the 14th Dalai Lama fled Tibet for India. That same year, the Chinese central government began reforming the thousand-year-old theocratic social system and emancipating a million Tibetans, or more than 90% of the population. In the first half of the 20th century, most of Tibet's land and property were owned by an elite few. The vast majority of Tibetans were uneducated, unable to own property, and had few, if any, basic rights. Life expectancy was less than 36 years old. The people of this Lhasa suburb may live plentiful lives today, but there are those here who remember what it was like when it was a small village outside Lhasa city 60 years ago. Decent healthcare is a basic necessity, and it has come a long way here in Tibet, where hospitals like this combine modern medicine with ancient knowledge. Today, the average life expectancy has risen to nearly 70 years. Since 1959, Tibet's population has grown by over 2 million to 3.44 million in 2018. 90% are ethnically Tibetan. This improvement to healthcare and lifestyle wouldn't be possible without economic growth. Tibet's GDP grew by almost 16,000% from 1959 to 2017. And the number of people living in poverty decreased by over 80% in just six years. This village by Lake Yamzo Yumko used to be a small village of no more than five families. 30 families now live here, and they've really benefited from tourism. Lamho has lived here her whole life. She has turned her house into a homestay to receive visitors from far and wide, yet she seldom leaves the village. The region is aiming to lift every last person out of poverty this year, and tourism, one of Tibet's strongest industries, will be a vital source of revenue. In 2018, 3.4 million trips were made to Tibet. This is one of the places those tourists will be headed. Once the summer residence for Dalai Lamas, today it is home to some incredibly well-preserved Buddhist artifacts. The government has invested heavily in protecting and preserving Tibet's historical buildings and artifacts. There are three UNESCO World Heritage Sites and dozens of conservation and restoration projects going on across the region. Schooling is also vital to the preservation of Tibetan culture with schools being not just free for all children all the way up to 18 years old, but also bilingual and regulated in a way that ensures language and culture is passed on to the next generation. Here at Lhasa Middle School, for example, they're having their Tibetan language class right now. And one of the students in this class is Gyan Tsun, who is passionate about his heritage. <laughs> Mm. 60 years ago, 95% of Tibetans were illiterate, while in 2018, illiteracy among young adults has now dropped to 0.52%. 
In 2017, there were over 37,000 students enrolled in higher education across Tibet. There are also vocational schools offering trades and crafts. And something that's going to bring jobs for this generation is going to be ecological protection. Protecting Tibet's spectacular natural environment is no mean feat though. Regulations across nature reserves that cover a third of the region have become stricter and better enforced in recent years. In 2018, 309,000 farmers and herders were hired by the local government as forest rangers. That almost doubled the amount of people employed in environmental protection. The central government has also allocated 15.5 billion yuan in ecology protection funds. And it's not just the sheer scale of investment, but a commitment to protecting all the things that make Tibet great, that will continue to improve things for the people, the architecture, the environment and its other inhabitants. See you next time.